Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here today. My name is Thomas Davis, the Digital Officer here at the African Leaders Malaria Alliance, and I'll be hosting today's event for you. We have a packed agenda today, and we are really looking forward to introducing the exciting new Alma Scorecard Hub and learning from Kenya's experience of using scorecard management tools. But before we get started, I just want to let you know that this webinar is available with French interpretation in Zoom. You can turn this on by selecting interpretation from the black bar at the bottom of the Zoom window. I will now briefly hand over to my colleague, uh, Dr. Corinne Karima, who will explain in French. Chers participants, bonjour et merci euh, d'avoir, euh, de participer à la, ce webinaire. Et comme mon collègue vient de le dire, pour les francophones, vous pouvez accéder à une chaîne en français en cliquant sur le bouton interprétation sur la fenêtre Zoom. Je vous remercie. Thank you, Corinne. Um, and also, if you have any questions during today's webinar, please use the Q&A feature in Zoom to ask the question. We will be answering questions at the end of the webinar today. So let's get started. Firstly, we are grateful to be co-hosting today's webinar with our valued partner, SIF, the Children's Investment Fund Foundation. Now, they have supported Ursa Alma for many years and have been pivotal in the creation and the launch of the Alma Scorecard Hub. Therefore, it is my pleasure to introduce Anna Huckabean, SIF's Chief Impact Officer. Now, Anna oversees evidence generation, monitoring and evaluation of SIF's portfolio of investments across all sectors. Before joining SIF in 2009, Anna led the learning and evaluation function at Care International, working on programs in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Before this, Anna was a senior policy and uh, research coordinator at Transparency International, where she developed and managed an evidence-based advisory desk for governments and multilateral agencies on good governance and transparency. In the early years of her career, Anna worked at the World Bank and led development and climate programs at a grassroots NGO in Armenia. Anna, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thomas, and welcome everybody to this webinar. I'm very excited to be here. Just a few words about SIF. Um, SIF was founded in 2002 and has quickly become one of the leading philanthropies focused on children and climate change. Alma has been one of our longest standing partners. And as Thomas has said, we've enjoyed a really um, fruitful partnership. Uh, we've been very privileged to be able to support and, and fund Alma in its journey across the accountability scorecards. Uh, what makes um, ALMA scorecards particularly impactful uh, from our perspective are a few things. Uh, first of all, I wanted to highlight the approach that ALMA has taken to country engagement and ownership. Uh, the scorecards are very much developed in close partnership with uh, country governments and um, prioritize indicators that are particularly pertinent to the country priorities. The scorecards also have a very um, transparent approach towards dissemination and a civil society is able to also hold the governments to account. So it is a really unique um, bottom up and top down approach to the scorecards that make them stand out. Uh, another um, very effective um, approach is the decentralization. We all know that increasingly with devolution, decisions are made at local levels, at county levels, particularly in the African countries where the scorecards have, have been active. And Alma have done a really fantastic job in decentralizing the scorecards so that local data and insights can drive the local decisions. Um, integration has been another unique feature of the Alma scorecards approach. We have seen in the development sector several examples where silos have been created in terms of verticals and focus on particular indicators. And what's really uh, unique and effective here is this integrated approach, because we know that a number of these indicators are actually mutually reinforcing and codependent. Co um, so this has been another very um, effective approach to scorecards. And finally, I really wanted to highlight that for us, um, highlighting problems through tools such as the scorecards uh, is necessary, but it's not sufficient. We want solutions to the problems. The country governments want solutions. The civil society wants solutions to all of these problems. 
And therefore, I'm particularly pleased to be launching the Knowledge Hub, which is the next chapter in the partnership um, between Alma and SIF, where we've really created resources and the know-how for the countries to take their action to the next level. So with that, I will pass over to my colleagues who will further um, talk to you about the scorecards and, and also share some videos about the tool. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you so much, Anna, for those welcoming remarks. Next, I'd like to turn to Julie Pimapi, the Executive Secretary here at the African Leaders Malaria Alliance, otherwise known as ALMA. Now, ALMA is a coalition of African Union heads of state and government established to drive accountability and action for results against malaria, neglected tropical diseases, reproductive, maternal, neonatal, child and adolescent health, as well as nutrition. Along with this, Joy also serves as co-chair of the Independent Expert Review Group for Every Woman, Every Child, and sits on the board of several international non-profits in global health. Joy is also the former Minister of Health of Botswana. Now, unfortunately, Joy has had some last-minute connectivity issues, but thankfully we have arranged for a recording that we can now play. Good afternoon. Ten years ago, Alma's heads of state and government requested a scorecard to enhance Africa's malaria tracking and accountability. Since its creation, the Alma Scorecard for Accountability and Action has been presented every quarter to senior political leaders, including heads of state and government, ministers of health and foreign affairs, and ambassadors to track progress. It has led to enhanced domestic resource commitments from countries rapid policy and regulatory change, accelerated commodity procurement, and action to address emergencies. AMA has also supported over 40 countries in Africa in developing their scorecard and management tools with the support of our valued partners, the Children's Investment Fund Foundation and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. The Ministry of Health staff use these tools at the national, subnational district and community levels to track and monitor critical interventions to end malaria and to improve maternal, newborn, child and adolescent health. The use of the scorecard tool has led to significant action and impact with countries using real-time data to respond to outbreaks, to shortages of staff or commodities and improving quality of care. Scorecard tools have also facilitated increased financing and increased political and multi-sectoral engagement in health. Minimal information was published on the use of scorecards in health in general. There was no platform for countries to share and access information about the tools that ALMA makes available to countries or the rollout process and associated resources and toolkits to support implementation. The COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated the need to create online tools for ALMA to support countries with the strengthening of accountability tools such as the scorecard and to accelerate action and delivery of results. As part of this digitalization agenda, our chair, His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta, decided to create a digital platform to provide real-time access to health data, facilitate strategic decision-making, and allow citizens to be aware of their health situation and be empowered to act. His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta launched the AMA Scorecard Hub on the 10th of February, 2021, at the time of the AU Summit. And already seven countries, including Kenya, have published their scorecards on the platform. Many countries have also shared best practices on using the scorecard tool and using tools like community scorecards to improve child, adolescent, and maternal health. COVID-19 is demonstrating the centrality of health to social, political, and economic imperatives. The pandemic has also highlighted the importance of basic critical decisions on reliable and complete data. As an urgent priority, countries, political leaders, governments, 
and development partners should ensure the highest level of political commitment and sufficient investment and develop harmonized data systems to enable decision making. It is also critical to translate this data into easily understandable information and foster public debate based on these findings. When data is made available to the, pub to the public, accountability is enhanced. For example, during the COVID-19 pandemic, sustained criticism over the lack of PPE or testing services has compelled decision makers to take action and to demonstrate the action taken. This is why tools such as the scorecard management tool are so critical to driving action. We are delighted to be working with countries and our valued partners to continue to grow the AMA scorecard hub and are delighted to have Dr. Bashir today from Kenya presenting best practices from his country. Kenya is leading the way in scorecard decentralization and is a global best practice with several counties in Kenya already using the scorecard effectively and many countries across the continent following Kenya's example. The hub is an essential digital platform for countries with video courses and online training materials. Many African countries and partners resources to continue to support countries to enhance the use and the reach of the scorecard are included in this platform. We will now watch a short video introducing the platform. Thank you. The African Leaders Malaria Alliance, a coalition of all the African Union heads of state and government, is excited to launch the Alma Scorecard Hub, an exciting new platform for countries and partners to access knowledge about scorecard management tools for action and accountability. I now take this opportunity to launch the Alma Scorecard Hub. This new platform will allow countries as well as our development partners to access information about scorecard management, tools for action, and accountability for malaria, reproductive, maternal, neonatal, child and adolescent health, and neglected tropical diseases. Used in over 40 countries in Africa, the scorecard management tools track progress of key health indicators to inform and empower health workers, local governments, and communities to act. Between 2012 and 2020, Alma has supported over 80 national scorecards for malaria, neglected tropical diseases, reproductive, maternal, newborn, child and adolescent health, nutrition, as well as community scorecards. The use of the scorecard tool has led to significant action and impact, with countries using real-time data to respond to outbreaks, shortages of staff or commodities, and improving quality of care. The Alma Scorecard Hub platform provides an exciting opportunity for countries to publicly share both their scorecards and best practices on how they have used the tool to improve health outcomes. The Alma Scorecard Hub also includes a wide range of materials for countries to learn about the scorecards and provide online courses for Ministry of Health staff. The launch of the Alma Scorecard Hub is a key step in African countries' efforts to drive accountability to achieve the bold targets set to achieve malaria elimination by 2030 and improve maternal, newborn, child and adolescent health on the continent. Hopefully that video of His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, President of the Republic of Kenya and Chair of Alma, gave you a bit of a flavor of the Alma Scorecard Hub. But for a more detailed introduction, I'd like to introduce Dr. Karin Karima, the lead for the Scorecard Hub here at Alma. Dr. Karima, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Thomas. Uh, so I would like to talk about the scorecard. So maybe first of all, for uh, new participants, I would like to, to, to explain you what is the scorecard tool. 
And the SCOCAD tool is a coded management tool that helps country, as you saw in the video, to track performance of key indicators. Usually those are priority indicators chosen by country, and those are indicators of the strategic plan. And then as well to conduct bottlenecks analysis and identify action. So what is very important is the scorecard tool is a country owned managed uh, by countries and using existing data and usually uh, routine uh, data from the routine health information system like the DHS2 that is being used by many countries. And then the scorecard tool is also used for action, accountability and advocacy, uh, of course, at national and subnational level. So next. So uh, since uh, uh, the creation of ALMA, we have assisted over uh, 40 countries to roll out the scorecards. And so far you will see in blue, uh, 40 countries that are, uh, have al already developed their malaria scorecards. We have also supported uh, 29 uh, reproductive health, maternal, neonatal, child and adolescent health scorecards. Uh, we have also supported six countries with the neglected tropical disease, as well as uh, four for community scorecard and two nutrition scorecard. Next. So what is important is the ALMA scorecard hub is the best place to learn how to create and improve uh, scorecard tools, discover best practices and share uh, experiences. So it's really a tool that uh, make all countries to share the experience and then also to learn how to improve and then uh, achieve their health uh, outcome. Next. So in terms of all the content material that is being uh, on the Halma Scorecards Hub, as you, you have seen in the video and also as well presented by our Executive Secretary, uh, Joy Pumapi, so you are having materials that are created by countries and that are also used by country. So you have a public directory of scorecards that are shared by countries. Uh, in the next slide, you will see how many countries have already uh, shared the, the scorecards. You also having uh, country best practices, helping how country can use scorecard and then also how they can learn. And then you also have guides and toolkits. And on top of that, there are also online courses that are used for, to, to help countries to decentralize their scorecard as well as to strengthen uh, their scorecard. And we are also using this platform to, 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 to organize events and webinars that are really also uh, giving an opportunity of country to share the experience using the scorecard. And then uh, finally, we are also using that uh, platform to give technical support. Next. So uh, here we are discussing on the importance of uh, the scorecard, sharing the scorecard on the scorecard hub. And uh, this is really a platform, a forum that enables countries to share the scorecard publicly. And then uh, it enables, first of all, uh, to increase the transparency and accountability, which is really the main focus of the scorecard management tool. Second, it's also highlighting, this is a great opportunity for countries uh, to showcase their progress, and then also to show how the country is also improving health outcome and uh, particularly in terms of the response uh, uh, in malaria as well as improving maternal and child health and nutrition. It's also inform and empower citizens and community to act and identify potential solution uh, uh, to challenges. Next. So since uh, the launch of the Alma Scorecard Hub, as uh, well uh, said by our executive secretary, uh, by, by His Excellency the President Kenyatta Uru, uh, in, on the 10th of April, we have already so far uh, 100 scorecards that are being shared. And then this is uh, from six countries. You, you are seeing the flag and we, we are really thankful to the champion countries and pioneers that have accepted to share their scorecard so that other countries can learn. We have also best practices for many countries, for 12 countries, 
And then uh, so far we have organized two webinars, one in English and one in French, where we had Ghana and Zambia uh, showing their best practices uh, as well as uh, especially Zambia on community health. And then a, a webinar in French where uh, the government of Rwanda has also uh, showed the best practices in improving the reproductive health using the scorecard. And so far we are having uh, already 100 uh, 50 people that have attended the online training and workshop. Thank you. Thank you, Corinne. The Alma Scorecard Hub website is the place to learn how to create and improve scorecards, discover best practices, and share your own experiences with scorecards. You can access the website at scorecardhub.org. The site is great if you have scorecards in your country, if you want to learn about creating scorecards, or if you want to look at the latest data in your country. To help achieve this, the Scorecard Hub is broken up into several parts. Today, I'm going to focus on four areas. Country scorecards, country best practices, guides and toolkits, and online courses. Let's first start with country scorecards. Now, this is a public directory of country scorecards that have been shared directly by African countries. The site includes scorecards about community health, malaria, nutrition, RMN, CAH, and vaccination programs. So let's take a look at an actual scorecard. I'm going to filter for Kenya, just for RMN, CAH scorecard tools, and from the past year. Doing this narrows the search to exactly what I'm looking for. I'm going to click on Kenya's quarter four scorecard. And on this page, you're presented with a big view of the scorecard. Now, the majority of scorecards on the hub are interactive, so you can drill down and analyse from country to region to district all the way down to health facility level. You can also download the scorecard if you want to print it or have it for offline reading. Underneath our scorecards, we provide relevant links to related content to help you learn more about that specific scorecard. The best practices highlight and celebrate the great progress made by countries. Let's click on the Kenya RMN CAH scorecard tool summary. For many of the different scorecards, we provide a summary highlighting how it works in a specific country, such as Kenya, and the impact the scorecard tool has had. All of our best practices are available in English and in French, and like the scorecards, you can also download our best practices as a PDF. Along with these summaries, we also offer more longer form best practices that go into more detail about specific topics. For example, about how two counties in Kenya have used the scorecard to improve indicators and mobilize resources. The hub also hosts video documentaries too. And just like our scorecard directory, you can filter best practices by topic and country to find exactly what you're looking for. Next up is guides and toolkits. Now these guides and toolkits provide step-by-step -step guidance on how to create scorecards, choose indicators, analyze scorecards, identify bottlenecks, use the scorecard for advocacy, and how to decentralize scorecards so they can be used at the sub-national level or the community level. We also have content on how to use the scorecard web platform too. Let's look at guides for community scorecards tools and then let's learn about how to create a new community scorecard. Now, all these guides are based on our years of experience of supporting countries with scorecard tools. We aim to add more content in the future, and if you have any suggestions, please let us know. And finally, let's look at online courses. Now, our online courses provide a structured way of learning about scorecard management tools. They're designed to help decentralize scorecards throughout countries. You can also download all of our course content to be able to access them offline. We currently have four courses covering creating a scorecard, strengthening an existing one, and two courses on the scorecard web platform. And we have many more courses in the pipeline. If you click on a course, such as strengthen an existing scorecard, you can learn more about the course and what you will learn and the course content. Let's click on the analyze a scorecard to identify underperforming indicators. Each lesson is made up of a video, related documents, and a quiz. 
If you pass all of the quizzes in a course, you will get a certificate. So they are some of the main features of the Alma Scorecard Hub. We encourage you to visit, learn about how other countries are using scorecard management tools, and take one of our online courses. Please visit us at scorecardhub.org. So that was an introduction into the new Alma Scorecard Hub. Now we move on to Kenya's experience of using scorecard management tools for RMNCAH. I would like to introduce my colleague, Robert Dika, to introduce Dr. Bashir Isaac from the Kenyan Ministry of Health. Robert, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Thomas, and uh, welcome everybody to this webinar. Uh, Dr. Bashir Isaac is the head of the Department of Family Health at the Ministry of Health, Kenya. He provides leadership and oversight for the divisions of reproductive and maternal health, child and neonatal health, adolescent health, primary health care, and nutrition and dietetics. He is also a member of the National Committee on Maintaining Essential Health Services amid COVID-19 pandemic. He has over 20 years of experience in maternal and reproductive health, providing technical leadership, coordinating, implementing, and implementing various health, uh, health interventions and as well as overseeing the development of relevant policies and guidelines. Ladies and gentlemen, I now welcome Dr. Bashir to take us through uh, the experiences and the best practices that have been that have been recorded in Kenya in terms of the RMNC program. Thank you very much. Over to you, Dr. Bashir. Thank you very much, uh, Robert and colleagues. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to, to share the Kenyan experience on the RMNCH scorecard. Um, and um, as I alluded to, that is who I am. Uh, can you give me the next slide, please? Just to provide a background on to the RMNCH uh, scorecard in Kenya. Uh, the scorecard is an integrated action-oriented management and accountability tool that has been alluded to earlier. Kenya has made remarkable progress in improving RMNCH outcomes during the last decade, improving access and coverage for these services is a priority for the government of Kenya. Kenya has shown encouraging improvements in maternal health outcomes since 2003 to 2020, but maternal mortality still remains a challenge with 362 per 100,000 live births. The significant improvement in outcomes is not homogeneous across all counties, the scorecard has been instrumental in showing these disparities and therefore guiding on where we need heavy investments to reduce the disparities. The government has introduced new policies to address critical barriers to access and utilization of RMNCH services and initiatives like Linda Mama, uh, which actually in Kiswahili means take care of the mother, free maternity services, uh, uh, a presidential initiative where mothers will, will be provided with free delivery services in all health, public health and uh, faith-based facilities with our reimbursement by the national government. Uh, through now it is through the National Health Ins Hospital Insurance Fund and also Beyond Zero Initiative, which is uh, spearheaded by our first lady, aimed at ensuring that no woman dies while giving life. Next. The history of the tool in Kenya, uh, it was first introduced in 2014 and is now publicly available on the scorecard hub as uh, being mentioned by the previous speakers. It was first in, uh, developed in 2014 by the Kenya Ministry of Health with support from ALMA and other RMNCH partners. The scorecard was rolled out to county levels from 2015. Counties are the sub-national levels for this country. We have 47. Uh, counties as a country, and this is this is uh, uh, devolution that happened after our 2010 constitution. So, with training of key county officers, uh, the partners that supported this are UNICEF, Pima, Options, and others. We continue to support the scorecard in several counties. Since then, almost all counties have been trained and retrained, and are producing and reviewing 
the scorecard and tracking actions. Tana River and Yandarua counties mobilized their own resources to decentralize the scorecard to sub-county level. That's now one level below the, below the county. And as part of maturity of the RMNCH scorecard, other scorecards such as the National Vaccines and Immunization Program, Nutrition Scorecards, and Community Health Scorecards have been developed in Kenya. The scorecard is still undergoing uh, an, uh, is also undergoing revision in tandem with the evolving country RMNCH situation. This uh, revision has been uh, dictated to by the issues of more categories of interest coming up in the country, like adolescent uh, health. Uh, other areas we realized from the implementation experience that other areas were not adequate, adequately covered, like the child health, and also changes in national and global policies, especially on the policy of uh, first a uh, ANC coverage, where initially we used to say four coverage were adequate, and now it's eight coverage. So because of this and other reasons, we are trying to review and revise the, the, the scorecard. In 2021, the scorecard was publicly shared on the scorecard hub, a new Pan-African platform launched by His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, which you have just watched in the video, the president of Kenya and chair of ALMA. Next. Why the scorecard in Kenya? It's an effective mechanism to manage performance of health systems at all levels and improve services. We will look at both the national level and the county level, which is a subnational uh, uses of this uh, scorecard. It, it helps in accountability and holds leaders and service providers accountable to improve the health of women and children in line with the constitution, vision 2030 and regional and global commitments. It helps in tracking performance for SDGs and measures progress against national health policy and strategy. And it's also used for advocacy and to highlight areas of need, success for national initiatives, such as Her Excellency's, the First Lady's Beyond Zero campaign, and also global accountability to track the global commitments uh, to Kenya. In the county, at the county level, we monitor RMNCH program performance against county and national RMNCH strategies and trigger action. Whichever of the counties is not doing progress, we use this scorecard for them to compete among themselves. Identify challenges and best practices, as mentioned earlier, and identify areas doing well and those with bottlenecks to, to, to remove the bottlenecks. Transparency and ad advocacy and prioritization. County government and partners made aware, are made aware of RMSH progress and challenges based on evidence uh, advocacy. Mutual accountability and dialogue with co community and civil society. Communities hold leaders accountable at that level. Next. The indicators, there are about 26 indicators in the current RMCH, uh, both national and county level, across seven categories spanning the complete continuum of care. But this is undergoing revision. Uh, we have reduced the, uh, we are reducing the indicators to 25 and also expanding the categories to eight. The category that has been included is the adolescent health category. Next. Best practices and experience in using the scorecard countrywide achievements. Uh, some have already been mentioned, but the most significant achievement is the decentralization of the scorecard to all of Kenya's new and highly decentralized county governments. This has been critical since county governments are responsible for service, health service provision, including planning, budgeting, and financing. With the accountability on the wall you see on the notice board, the community can look at that and hold the direct service providers accountable for the actions. Thank you. Next. Examples of best practices uh, uh, in the use of uh, scorecard are health system strengthening, the RMSH scorecard is a key management tool for strengthening health systems at all levels. For example, in CI and Nguri counties, the scorecard was linked to revitalization of the community units. It was used for the community to interact and make improvement in implementation of the community strategy. 
There has been shown data improvement. Counties indicated improvement in data reporting and quality since review of the scorecard data. On a routine basis, leads to greater demand by managers for accurate data. The counties also widely reported that members of the county assemblies, these are the parliamentarians at county level, were using the scorecard data to solicit money for respective wards, and that increase in county assembly fund allocations for this service or training for our county. Accountability and use of staff performance management, ownership of the scorecard process and resultant changes in management practices have also been widely reported. Gaps and under, under, underperforming indicators shown on the scorecard have led to greater use of bottleneck analysis to agree upon the most appropriate response. Resource mobilization. The scorecard is also used by counties as an advocacy and resource mobilization tool. In Migori County, uh, family planning commodity coverage was found to be below 40%. The scorecard was used to advocate for increased county funding for related services from between $100,000 to $140,000. The increased funds have been used for FP activities and commodities. Next. In service delivery improvements, uh, using the scorecard tool mechanisms for identification of bottlenecks and follow-up on actions has contributed to several improvements across the indicators, including skill deliveries and immunization coverage. For example, in Garissa, following the review, program officers identified actions to increase coverage of underperforming indicators. Actions included outreach for immunization, uh, increased outreach for immunization, emergency obstetric and newborn care training, and engaging community health volunteers to refer mothers for skill delivery. This increased uh, immunization from 48 to 82%, and skill delivery rose from 28 to 45% over the same period. In Bungoma County, the scorecard review showed skill deliveries were just over 50%. This led to investment in reorientation of the traditional bound attendance, TBAs, with 400 TBAs trained and supported more than uh, and, and supported more than 14,900 women to go to health facilities for skilled mothers to assistance. Next. The lessons learned and uh, key success factors. The lessons learned of the Kenya's RMNC scorecard use is leadership commitment. Implementation of Kenya's RMNC scorecard tool is embedded in the Ministry of Health Performance Contracts, published regularly and disseminated widely in a timely fashion within one month of the end of each quarter. Strong leadership and commitment by both national and county leaders on the scorecard enhances its use to identify bottlenecks, make recommendations, track actions, and ultimately improve performance. Decentralization of the scorecard enhances ownership and improves the use of the scorecard as a management tool to improve performance at all levels. Integrated into systems, Integration of the scorecard web platform with the Kenya Health Information System 2 enhances regular quality, uh, quarterly production, allows inclusion of facility level data and improves data quality. Use of the action tracker has facilitated improved quality and efficiency of ma management meeting discussions and served as an accessible system to track implementation of agreed actions linked to indicator underperformance. Next. Best practices on the hub, and this is the link to the hub which was presented earlier for the scorecards and for best practices. Next. And this shows us examples of uh, the counties that have best practices in, 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 in Kenya. I think they're in Migori. You would see the profiles of the, and the best practices of different. Uh, counties for Kenya, there are about three, Migori, Siaya, and uh, Bungoma. Thank you, and back to the moderator. Thank you so much, Dr. Bashir, um, for sharing Kenya's experience of using scorecard management tools for RMN CAH. Um, Kenya has really been at the uh, at the forefront of um, scorecard best practices for many years. 
Um, and it's been great to learn about how you've been using scorecards to improve health outcomes um, at all levels across your country. Thank you so much, Dr. Isaac, for giving up your time to join us today and sharing your expertise. Now Thank I'd like you. to hand over to my colleague, Clelia, who will lead today's Q&A session. Clelia, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, so my name is Clelia Frogel. Bonjour. Uh, I'm the Knowledge Hub Manager. Uh, so we have a, received a couple of questions, but just a reminder that if you have any questions, please submit them through the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. The first question we received is for the ALMA team. Um, so during COVID-19, uh, we've seen an increase in the public's interest in uh, health dashboards and scorecards with uh, showing the number of cases of COVID-19 and number of deaths. Why is it essential to share health data and how do you think the Scorecard Hub will contribute uh, to the broader African effort to enhance accountability in health? So to answer this question, I'm going to call on uh, Dr. Melanie Renshaw, our Chief Technical Advisor. Melanie, over to you. Thank you very much, Clelia, and thank you so much for the excellent question. I think the COVID-19 pandemic has shown us that we can share data in the real time and not just look at the data and think, hmm, that's not good, but to actually act quickly on what the data are telling us. And we have then been able to minimize the impact of COVID on, on deaths, on, on cases, and also on the delivery of essential health services across the board. I think it's essential that everyone from a head of state and government to a community member have access to real-time data that describes the health situation of the place where they live. It's only then that you are able to engage meaningfully in a health program, as well as holding the health providers accountable for the delivery of quality services. The scorecard approach allows underperforming interventions to be improved by targeting resources and efforts. We have just heard from Kenya some fantastic examples of actions that have been taken in order to address either geographical areas that were underperforming or core interventions that were underperforming. By sharing the scorecards through the Knowledge Hub, first of all, and very pleasingly, it, it answers um, His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta the chair of ALMA, his call to action for digitalization and data transparency. It also allows countries to learn from each other, sharing best practices. So if one country has a really great example of an action that was taken in response to underperformance, other countries can try that. Um, and so having peer-to-peer -peer learning across the health systems of Africa is really a fantastic opportunity that is afforded by the sharing of scorecards on, on the Knowledge Hub, Scorecard Knowledge Hub. Additionally, it does allow us to enhance accountability, transparency and action for health across the continent. And so we all become used to using real-time data to come up with action and increase impact. Thank you, Clelia. Thank you so much, Melanie. Just a reminder, if you have questions, do submit them through the Q&A button. But we've received another question for Anna from SIF. So the question is, SIF has supported um, the development of several knowledge hubs across your portfolio of investment in health, but also in climate change. Why are these, these platforms so important to enhance data sharing and knowledge transfer? Anna, over to you. Thank you so much, Clelia, and thanks for the uh, good question. I think like my colleagues and the uh, Kenya government representative highlighted, um, these are excellent platforms for enhancing the transparency and accountability of the tool further. These are brilliant platforms through which the countries can learn from each other, not only on what has worked, but we're also really interested in sharing openly and transparently on what has not worked. Uh, through the knowledge hubs. We also think uh, knowledge hubs are a very effective way of paving the way towards sustainability because by creating and transferring knowledge to the hands of the countries, uh, we're actually making it possible for them to sustain these efforts with less and less technical assistance and involvement from the other actors. So we're very um, optimistic 
about the future of Knowledge Hub if they are done in a right way and if they have a very strong action bias, just like we've seen in this example of the Alma scorecards. And it's really important to also highlight Knowledge Hubs, in our experience, work best where they come at the back of already a number of years extensive uh, programming, like in this case in Alma, and real uh, life experiences developed with countries, because then they're rooted in practice rather than theory. Thank you so much, Clelia. Thank you, Anna. We've received another question, this time for Dr. Bashir. So Dr. Bashir, as we've seen in your presentation, um, Kenya is leading the way in scorecard decentralization and is already a global best practice. What would be your main recommendations for other countries, especially ministries of health, who wish to roll out the scorecard? Dr. Bashir. Thank you, Clelia, for that question. Um, my advice to other countries is that uh, since we are sharing this good pra best practice and we have seen the value of decentralization, uh, service delivery ideally should be closer to, to the people. And uh, we recommend that uh, uh, at national level, it's important to have the ownership but the real service delivery is happening at the sub-national levels. And the more they are involved, the faster they progress in terms of changing the indicators and the impact of the health service delivery, quality of health service delivery and coverage, uh, the better. In Kenya, we, have now, we are now looking at, if you, if you looked at my slides, two of the counties have gone to uh, sub-sub-national level. And uh, our ambition is actually to reach over 300 that level uh, uh, of, uh, of coverage. And we will uh, see, you could have issues within the same subnational county because every sub-county has maybe six to 10 uh, sub-counties. And uh, if you use it at national, I mean, sub-national level and at, at the sub-sub-national level, you will look at the problem at its source and, and solve it and have more hands, more brains, more people, more resources to solve the issues and report back. So it becomes a totally nationally on both at the, low, uh, at the lower level and at the top level. Therefore, we, the earlier uh, a, a, a nation or a ministry of health in any country decentralizes, the faster the response and the better the results. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Bashir. That's all we have time for for this Q&A but invite you to contact us uh, through the scorecard hub. Um, I will put the link in the chat and I thank you and hand over back to our moderator. Thank you so much, Clelia, for that, um, for that informative Q&A session today. Um, so that draws uh, to conclusion this exciting uh, webinar that we uh, have had today. I would like to thank all of today's speakers for sharing their expertise with us. And I'd also like to thank all of you, all of our attendees today. Thank you for listening and joining in by asking questions. We also encourage you to visit the Scorecard Hub at scorecardhub.org. Follow us on Twitter at Alma underscore 2030 and subscribe to our newsletter by um, going to scorecardhub.org forward slash newsletter. Now I would uh, like to hand over to our Executive Secretary, Joy Pumapi, who has some words on the sad passing of His Excellency John Magafuli, the fifth president of the United Republic of Tanzania. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in mourning the loss of His Excellency John Pombe Joseph Magafuli, the fifth president of the United Republic of Tanzania who passed away last week. President Magufuli had a PhD in chemistry. And as the fifth president of the United Republic of Tanzania was known for his no nonsense approach to development. We want to recognize Tanzania today because as the founding chair of the African Leaders Malaria Alliance, the fourth president of the United Republic of Tanzania, His Excellency President Kikwete, introduced the scorecard on action and accountability and popularized it amongst fellow heads of state 
across the continent. We would like to share with you a video demonstrating the burden of malaria in Tanzania and the use of the scorecard as a high level advocacy tool that has democratized amongst parliamentarians and amongst the population the use of data to inform information, policies, and decision making. Thank you. According to the World Health Organization, Tanzania is among 11 countries with the highest transmission of malaria. In the fight against malaria, the Tanzanian government has been taking several initiatives to make sure that malaria is eradicated by 2030. Interventions against the disease include the distribution of insecticide-treated nets, indoor residual spraying, diagnosing all patients presented with fever using rapid diagnostic tests, as well as larviciding all mosquito breeding sites. In 2019, the Comic Relief GSK Partnership worked with the African Leaders Malaria Alliance to support the United Republic of Tanzania to enhance high-level advocacy and action for malaria with the use of a scorecard. It was launched by the Honorable Minister of Health in November 2019 on Sodec Malaria Day, a yearly event to create awareness of malaria in Southern Africa and was attended by Tanzanian parliamentaries against malaria, known as Tapoma. The Malaria Scorecard is a management tool that shows the performance of priority malaria indicators in a simple, color-coded format. The scorecard is used at political level to keep malaria high on the agenda. This scorecard will ease the whole process of accountability because it uses indicators that evaluate the situation based on evidence and give importance to the areas of underperformance. Using the health service data being reported daily, every quarter, the National Malaria Control Program produces the malaria scorecard. The subnational indicators on the scorecard can help one to gauge the performance of key interventions such as how many pregnant women are receiving anti-malaria medicine, the distribution of bedness to pregnant women, distribution of bedness to children during vaccination, or one can examine the incidence of malaria within the district or look into the positivity rate of patients. You can access the scorecard in two ways. The first way is through scorecard web platform which can be accessed online via a computer through a web browser. With the aim of easing the use of scorecard, we saw that it will be more appropriate and more user-friendly to make the scorecard available through smartphones. Through the Malaria Scorecard, leaders can better support the implementation of malaria interventions and actions that address underperforming indicators. Tanzania's Parliamentary Committee Against Malaria, TAPOMA, and other high-level decision-makers were trained on how to access and use malaria data to take action. For example, in two of my districts, Kagera Municipality and the Municipality of Bukoba, one can clearly see on the scorecard that it is a path we need to follow and where we need to take more action. Through Malaria Scorecard, leaders like District Commissioner, together with District Executive Director, during our meeting, there will be discussion about the indicators. Citizens also have a big role to play, and we have been collaborating with them in the fight against malaria, especially when considering a big part of transmission of malaria goes head in hand with the education. And so far, they have been helping in making sure that we eliminate malaria. To achieve the goal of malaria elimination by the year 2030, there is a need for leaders to support malaria interventions in their jurisdiction and maintain malaria high on the political agenda. By using data to support the fight against malaria, a Zero Malaria Tanzania is possible. Zero Malaria starts with you. Zero Malaria starts with me. And Zero Malaria starts with our leaders. Thank you so much for joining us all today um, and hopefully uh, you all appreciated that loving message um, from our executive secretary joy Pumapi, for her 
kind words on the sad passing of His Excellency John Magafuli, the fifth president of the United Republic of Tanzania. Thank you for joining us.